Allah is the one who 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 is of systemic pharmacology that is about the eye ocular pharmacology this is the lecture number one what are the learning objectives we should have a basic understanding of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of the ocular drugs what are the ocular routes of drug administration we will learn topical antibiotics immunomodulatory agents and cycloplegic agents some diseases will be discussed like glaucoma Ateric, conjunctivitis, levitis, eye drooping, etc. We will go through the ocular anatomy and physiology of the eye. What are the pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics of ocular therapeutic agents? Furthermore, we will focus on the drugs and their side effects, especially certain conditions where the vitamins are deficient. Anatomy of the eye. Eye is made up of three coats which includes the optically clear aqueous humor, lens and vitreous body. The outer coat consists of the cornea and the sclera. The middle coat contains the main blood supply of the eye. Here, conjunctiva is the membrane that covering the sclera, the whole sclera. Colored part of the eye is the iris and it is unique to every person. You can see it is here above the pupil. Cornea is the front layer of the eye. This is the front layer. Pupil is the black dot in the center of the eye that acts as a gateway for the light. Behind the iris and the pupil, there is a lens. You can see. Choroid is a layer containing blood vessels. It contains several blood vessels as you can observe. It is located between the retina. It is located at the back of the eye and it is located between the retina, the inner light sensitive area and the sclera, outer white wall. Sclera and retina ki ye beech mein hai. Retina is a layer of photoreceptor cells and glial cells within the eye. It captures the incoming photons and transmit them along with the neural, neuronal pathways. The circuit is either electrical and chemical signal from the brain to perceive a visual picture. It is located at the back of the eye, opposite of the lens of the pupil. The lens focuses the light enter in the eye that hits the retina and its photoreceptor cells. For the vision, the different parts of the eye must work together to produce a clear vision. Clear film is an outer covering of the eye and here, here are three layers. The outer layer is a thick layer which is a oily layer, a lipid layer. Then we have an aqueous layer, a watery layer in the middle and then there is a mucus layer before the cornea. It is a unique thin fluid layer of approximately 3 micrometer in volume that covers the outer mucosal surface of the eye. As such, it is the interface of the ocular surface within the environment. It covers the ocular surface and it is important for protecting the eye. It is lubricating the ocular surface, maintaining the smooth surface for the light reflection and preserving the health of the conjunctiva and avascular cornea. Beside these, we have lacrimal glands in the eye. It's a, it is a bilobe tear shaped gland with the primary function of secreting the aqueous portion of the tear film. You can see it is located above the eye. It maintains the ocular surface. It is primarily located in the anterior superior temporal orbit within the lacrimal fossa of the frontal bone. It is a part of nasolacrimal system to drain the tears from the ocular surface to the lacrimal sites and ultimately the na nasal cavity. Blockage of the nasolacrimal system can cause tears to overflow the eyelid and down the cheek. This condition is epiphora. Along with the anatomy of the eye, we must know that Pharmacodynamically and pharmacokinetically, eye is a different organ. As far as far, uh, pharmacodynamic is concerned, it is the mechanism of action of drug. The drug has to bind to their regulatory molecules, usually neurotransmitters, hormones, receptors, or enzymes. It may be agonist, it may be antagonist. Or if the drug is acting on the enzyme level, it may be a activator or it may be an inhibitor. In the eye, several receptors are present. There is alpha receptors for sympathetic nervous system. When radial muscles activate them, there will be the contraction of the radial muscles that result in the midrasses. 
then we have circular muscles in the eye having parasympathetic nervous system innervation having m1 receptors if circular muscle contract they will cause meiosis then we have ciliary muscles ciliary muscles contains two different types of receptors beta 2 receptors and m2 receptors when beta 2 receptors are innervated they are innervated with sympathetic nervous system fibers and when they relax while m2 are the part of parasympathetic nervous system and they, if they are contracted then they will result in accommodation and focusing of the eye for linear vision beside these several other receptors are present in the eye and these are the receptors of uh, prostanoid fp receptors there yeah, any inter, any inflammation will trigger the cyclooxygenase pathway several prostaglandins like prostaglandin e2 or uh, and prostaglandin f2 alpha will synthesize and they will bind with their respective receptors that are present in the eye for example if it is a cornea here prostaglandin acid will be bind to fp receptor and this will lead to the changes in the cell nucleus of the ciliary muscles here it will exerts its effects to reduce the intraocular pressure by increase uveo scleral uveo scleral outflow prostaglandins appear to activate a molecular transduction cascade that leads to increase synthesis of matrix metalloproteinases these proteinases cleaves the extracellular ma matrix components such as collagen within the ciliary muscles these collagen are get cleaved to jenge within the ciliary muscles and sclera this resulting the reduction of extracellular matrix matrix se kam ho jayega and this may contribute the mechanism to increase the outflow of the aqueous tumor from the eye that result in the increased intraocular pressure another approach is the pharmacokinetic approach that is the absorption distribution metabolism and excretion of the drug ocular drug delivery system is a challenge for the optom ophthalmologist here there is a barrier which is the anatomical barrier and the physiological barrier because of the uh, eye anatomy several drug delivery routes are available here the drug can be used locally in the form of eye drop ointments periocular injections intraocular injections or the drug may be used systemically like orally iv what are the advantages of the ophthalmic drug delivery system several disadvantages are there like there may be a ocular irritation and toxicity and the transport process from the cornea to the receptor site is a rate limiting step the permeation enhancer increases the cornea uptake by modifying the integrity of the corneal epithelium which route is most the most common is uh, the administered topically in the form of eye, eye drop and ointment this topical ocular delivery system has a lowest ocular bioavailability because of the physiological and anatomical barriers that prevents the efficiency of drug to enter into a posterior segment the most common drug route is the ocular or topical route as it is easy the patient directly apply there will be accurate dosing and there will be a high patient convenience and compliance absorption of topically administered drug is through the permeation across the cornea from pre corneal tear films or through the systemic absorption through local blood capillaries at Tear film and caldi sacs may enlarge up to 30 microliter in the volume under enlarged conditions. Drug penetration into the eye is approximately linearly related to its concentration in the tear film. 
Other factors are also there that the time the drug remains in the caldi sacs and pre-corneal tear films, how the drug is eliminated by the nasolacrimal drainage, how the drug binds to tear proteins, there may be a drug metabolism by tear proteins and tissue protein, there may be a diffusion across the cornea and conjunctiva, how the drug distributed, normally the drug is absorbed through transcornea absorption and it gets accumulated in the aqueous humor and then distributed to the, to the intraocular structures. After reaching to its receptor, it will produce its function. Then, using the tribular meshwork pathway, the drug is eliminated or the drug leads to the systemic circulation and removed from the eye. Some drugs have tendency to bind with the melanin like vitriatic effects of alpha adrenergic agonist slower in onset because of the darkly pigmented irids as compared to those with the lightly pigmented irids because of the binding of the drugs to the melanin atropines mediate effects is long lasting in non albino reds then in albino reds there may be an accumulation of chloroquine in retinal pigments epithelium so these are several factors how the drug is metabolized in the eye? There is the enzymatic by formation of the ocular drugs. Particularly, its phases are present. Some drugs are in the form of prodrugs. These drugs are converted into the active one, like we have example DPV varin, hydrochloride, and retinoprost. DPV frin is a prodrug of epinephrine and used for the to decrease the intraocular pressure in chronic open angle glaucoma. It is available as ophthalmic solution or eye drops. Latinoprost is a eye drop formulation that used to treat increased intraocular pressure in patient with ocular hypertension or open angle glaucoma. It is a prostaglandin F2 alpha analog. Then we must know the roots of ocular drug delivery system. This lecture will be discussed in the next lecture. Thank you.